Hello everybody, my name is James Bamford. I'm an artist that lives in Beaverton, Oregon. This is my plain air kit. It includes more than enough supplies that I need when I'm on the go or traveling to practice painting. Um, this bag is a makeup bag that I got from Target. Makeup bags are great for art supplies because they hold brushes and all basically everything you need and they're usually a lot more economical than like art specific bags. There's usually a markup on those. Um, in here I have some of my drawing and painting tools. This is the top uh, compartment. I got some micron pens, mechanical pencil, sharpie, uh, Kaweco fountain pens, blackling pencils, they got some great lead. One thing I like about these is the eraser. You can uh, pull it out so you can have a sharp end and a dull end. You can you can actually even replace them with some. Um, right here I got some uh, spares. So if, if you wear one down too far you can just stick a new one in. Brush pens. These are, if you've ever seen a uh, uh, Kim jong Gi or Karl Kopinski or anybody like that, they use a lot of these Pentel brush pens. Yeah. Fun for drawing, hard to master. It's going to be a few years before I have any good results with these, but uh, if you're curious, I have a few different sizes, and I even have one in gray ink. Gray ink is, uh, gray ink is great for toning. Um, you can even combine it with a, a water brush to get some uh, lighter tones. Over here, I have a mechanical eraser and some uh, ruling pens. This is a new tool that I've been using. Uh, you use it with a gouache loaded in here and a ruler. You can get a really sharp, straight line in your painting, which is great if you're doing something with buildings or, uh, you know, architecture type stuff. Over here, we got a nice uh, X-Acto blade. I can use that on the go for sharpening pencils. Next to it, uh, we have a lead holder. So I think in here I have an H, H uh, hardness lead, um, which the Blackwing's lead is pretty soft. So if, if I don't want my lead to really be a prominent feature in my painting, I'll use an H lead, a harder lead. My brushes, if your brushes are too long for your plein air setup, just chop the chop the uh, handles. Um, this that idea came from to me while I was watching uh, James Gurney because he chops his handles. He also used to be a show card writer when he was young, and I read a book on show card writing. A lot of those guys would chop their handles, and uh, there's different techniques you can use with a shorter handle. And if you've ever seen those old sign painters, you can see that they can get you can get great results and great smooth uh, gestural lines. And beyond that, even when you're painting plain air, normally the uh, size of your paper or canvas is really small, and you don't need the whole range of movement. So short short brushes are fine. Um, in here, I already showed you the uh, the extra erasers I have for my pencils. I have uh, extra ink for my brush pens and my fountain pens. And this this knife usually lives in my pocket. I'm a bit of a knife enthusiast too. Um, this is a, was kind of an impulse purchase a little while back. I think it was like forty dollars or something. But it's a pocket exacto knife and. It locks open with the push-in button, and it locks closed. So if you need one that you can carry in your pocket, this is great for that. Of course, if you don't want to spend $40, you can just get one of those folding box cutters that they sell at every checkout from AutoZone to Ace, and those work just fine too. Okay. Next thing we have is... Uh oh. Don't put your nicest brushes in here. They're going to get destroyed. Next thing we have is uh, this bigger compartment down here. 
I always carry a rag with me. Um, I have uh, my watercolors and I have some gouache. You can mix them together. Gouache is an opaque watercolor. So it's basically the same thing except with watercolor if you darken your lights too much in, on your paper it's very difficult to get them back. There are some techniques I can talk about in another video to do that but generally it's you're like done. But with a gouache white you can mix it with watercolor or gouache and you can put some of those uh, those lights back in. Of course it won't be as uh, it won't appear as light as the paper but for the purpose of getting your idea complete or communicated it's, it's nice. Okay in this hand I have a ruler I can use that with my ruling pens I can hold it at arm's length to get some uh, measurements um, it's great to have I have a, a metal dish here or a palette I can use this with wash and watercolor Metal's critical, I'll tell you why in a second. Little watercolor pencil. Let's get some details in if I want. Um, this this uh, hobby tape here. It's like a lower adhesive than masking tape and it won't rip up your paper as much. Um, I spent years and years using those cheap masking tapes and electrical tape and this and that. It is worth it to have some good quality tape, I'll tell you that. These are my water dishes. I carry water in this one and in this one with these screw caps. Um, I often use this one for at the beginning of my painting because the bigger brushes fit into it really easily. I just pour some water out of this into this. This water stays clean. Pour water into here, I can do my washes. If I want to use cleaner water later with the details, I use uh, I use these containers. These are pretty standard at art stores. Um, both of them are metal, and both of them have clips. So you can either clip it on your book, or you can use magnets. Um, I have clips here to hold my 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 sketchbook. I have an eraser, and I have another blade here, which uh, honestly I probably don't need to be carrying in here because I have two other ones already. Um, this is just like a puck watercolor. If I'm on like a plane or something or in a really tight spot, I'll use this instead of this. It's less, uh, less work to set it up, but the downside is if you're going to do a wash, it takes a little bit more effort to get these paints up because they're already dry. All right, this is the main part of it. This, well, for one thing, sketchbook, you gotta have that. This easel, this is based off of James Gurney's sketch easel. If you wanna know the instructions, he has a video for sale on Gumroad, and he also has a Facebook group that's free. It's called Sketch Easel Builders. Basically, all it is is, is a thin 1 8 birch plywood, um, is magnets. I, I uh, installed magnets in the base to hold all my all my uh, tools, my water cans. Everything fits in there. You can also clip it on, no problem. Friction hinges. Get those on Amazon. You can set how much resistance they are, but basically it holds this angle. T nut. You can buy a T nut that's the same size as a camera tripod. So now this. Quick disconnect fits into this tripod that I got, um, and all of it is I made it myself, so it's the perfect size for my bag. Super convenient, folds right away, slides in the pocket. Can't beat it. So let me know what you guys think of my setup. If you have any questions about any of the materials that I have in here, uh, I'd be happy to do some some uh, tool reviews in the future. Um, I'm curious to see if you guys have any comments on like tools or techniques you guys use for plein air painting, but uh, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.